something that needs a little fixing on Bar Point Farms. Hey guys, it's Eric here at Far Point Restorations and Repairs. Today, work begins or continues, I guess, on this Subaru EJ25 engine. This is the engine that's going to go into the bus. I know, Volkswagen bus, Subaru engine. It's called a Bussaroo swap. And uh, what you can't see off screen here is that piles and piles of boxes full of conversion parts and engine rebuild parts all ready to go. Uh, it has been a crazy summer so far. You haven't seen a ton of updates out of the bus because we've been working on the garage. And while that's been going on, I've pretty much dedicated most of my day and some of my evenings into that. But here we are. I've got the intake manifold loose, I believe, so I'm going to go ahead and pull it off. We'll take a look at this engine real quick, and, uh, and I'm going to get started. What I'm going to be doing is the head gaskets, a timing belt, water pump. Uh, when I took the engine out, I realized that it already had had head gaskets. The car had 160, I think, 160,000 miles on it. Usually these head gaskets fail between 80 and 120,000 miles. If they failed at 80,000 miles, well, then they're probably due to be replaced again. If they failed at 120, then I probably could have got away without doing the head gaskets a second time. But since I don't want to pull this thing back out once it's all together, if possible, I'm going to go ahead and do it. It's not a terrible job, especially with the engine already out of the car. And I'll take you along for that journey. So that's it. Let's do this thing. I've got, like I said, I've got this unbolted. I've got all my plugs undone. And I'm just going to pull that up and snake it out. And there it is. There's our whole intake fuel injectors. You can leave a lot of this stuff together. I'm just going to lay this on the ground. And if you're working on an, uh, a Subaru EJ engine, that's the best way to go about doing it because you don't have to take all that stuff off individually. The more stuff you take off, the more chances there are that something is going to go wrong. Break a bolt off, cut a wire, or forget to plug wire back in. This is just, honestly, you've got two vent lines that come out. You've got a vent line here that comes out, and then you've got some cooling lines. I left those attached. You could take this off if you want to, but it's not in the way of doing our head gaskets. So the next thing I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna start pulling my front covers off to expose my timing belt, and I'm gonna get all that taken care of. I'm gonna make a bunch of marks, and then uh, we're ready to pull off our valve covers and take off our head bolts. So this, this job is not terribly long. I'm not gonna film the whole thing. I just, there's so many videos out there, people doing this, but I wanted to bring you along on what it is I do here on an average day at the Far Point Restorations part of Far Point Farms. And let's do it. Okay, now we've got the intake off. And as you can see, I've got one of the cylinder heads off. I'll show you here. It's in really good shape. I honestly did not need to do this. This is just peace of mind here, but nice clean cylinder walls here. Definitely some uh, built up carbon, but that's no big deal. And the jackets look clean enough, but just going to polish all this up. Do the same thing with the head. I'll check the head with a straight edge to make sure that it doesn't need to be machined. But since it didn't have bad head gaskets, I can't imagine that it does. On the front here, I'll show you marks that I've made here and I'll, I'll make a video when I put this timing belt back on of the proper way to line stuff up. Now I am going to be replacing the water pump so I've got all of these idlers here plus the tensioner which I've already taken off. I've gone ahead and decided to replace all that so that'll all be new. And so next up is pulling the head off on this side and then uh, I'll be using the parts washer cleaning it up. I'm going to clean the engine some. I'm not going to paint it or anything. just going to clean it up. I already vacuumed out some of it, but drain the oil out of it. Got a new filter for it and new thermostat. And it's time to put it back together with new gaskets. This is, this is a one-day job if you started early and stayed up late, or a two-day job if you want to take your time. I'm trying to enjoy myself. This is, you know, I do this stuff for a living, so a lot of times this feels like work if I do it too fast and I, I kind of get into that rhythm of trying to you know beat the time even when the time doesn't actually exist but this case here I'm just just having fun I've been watching TV listening to some music and uh, yeah you can see here it's dirty I'm gonna clean all that stuff up but yeah man just having a good time so the Bussaroo Subaru donor engine well it's coming along man we'll have it torn down here in a little while and it's time to try out that new Harbor Freight parts washer 
I figure I'll show you on this side how easy it is to pull a head off of one of these EJ engines. Uh, now, a lot of people will do this in the car. I've done a few like that. I don't recommend doing them that way. It's just, I mean, for the amount of time it takes to pull the motor, it sure is peace of mind involved in, uh, in being able to see this thing from all angles and make sure that it's going properly. But that being said, when I worked at the Subaru dealership, Lots of guys were doing it in the car, especially if it's just a head gasket swap on uh, these older ones. Now the newer 2013s and, and up, those things had massive engine oil consumption issues. Those are really not great engines, if I'm going to be honest. And uh, Subaru had to buy a whole lot of those back from, the, from customers. And first we were rebuilding... And then we were just replacing. We were doing uh, short block replacements. Sometimes we do whole long blocks, really. So incredible. The low tension oil rings and low tension compression rings that a lot of manufacturers are going to really, really screwed up the system. All right, so there is the guts, right? A little bit of oil still left in this one. All right, we take off those. Those are our spark plug tubes here. And what you see here, these are our valves, intake and exhaust valves, and uh, yeah, it still looks pretty good. I'm going to get a drip pan to catch some of this stuff because when I take this head off, some are. But you can see these red colored ones here. There's six head bolts, and we're going to take those off. It's kind of a star pattern that I'll be doing, and uh, and then the head comes off, but there's just not a lot to it. And this, these single... Uh, cam engines there's really not a lot to it which is, is nice it's really nice but let me get a catch pan under here and uh, we'll proceed all right bolt wise it's an unusual bolt it's a 12.14 millimeter 12 point is something that most of the time we just don't use a lot here in the industry but you're going to break them loose with a breaker bar I usually go about one full turn and, uh, and then i use an impact gun to wind them the rest of the way out Last one here, we can switch to a gun. There we go. Now, if you were going to reuse the head bolts, you'd want to put these in order or mark them with tape. I bought new head bolts because they're kind of stretch bolts. That means that you tighten them to a certain, certain torque spec, but then you're gonna twist them a certain amount of degrees and that's called torque to yield. So I usually replace those. They're not terribly expensive. Now, before I take this last bolt out, I want to kind of have a firm grasp on this thing because even though, even though there are uh, dowels that kind of hold the head in place, I, I don't want to trust those because <laughs> what if there's a problem there? Actually, I forgot something. I got to take my dipstick out. It kind of bolts along that backside there. I don't want that to be an issue when we try to take this thing loose. So what I'm going to do is hold it with one hand, remove that with the other, and then I should be able to wiggle, and away it comes. And again, here we go. Here's our head gasket. This one's stuck to the, the block itself, and I mean stuck in the lightest. You see these are uh, Felpro 
So this has already been done once and they are in good shape to be honest with you. I'm, like I said, it, it kind of pains me to do this job. I usually only do work if a car needs it. But since we plan on traveling quite a bit with this engine, we want to make sure that she's tip top and ready to go. And so there we are, we're ready. That'll do it for today, my friends. I'm Eric, I hope you're enjoying the bus project. It's obviously coming along, but it is definitely a project that is massive in scale. We hope to have it done by next summer because we're planning on taking it on an epic journey. Stick around, I'll see you next time.